So in our digital scale model of the solar system, we just use Google Earth to plot out the relative distances between the planets on a location that's familiar to you. Now we're gonna use that Google Earth imagery to take some screenshots and import that across to Scratch. When we do that, we can create a view in our application that will show the user the relative distances and they can click between the planets. We'll also create a seamless transition between the planets so it looks a little bit neat. And if you're a teacher or a homeschooling parent out there searching for some solar system printable worksheets, then I got you covered. Go check the description for a link to some resources that you can use with your group of learners. Okay, get out your desktop camera and we'll get stuck into this in just a sec. Hello world, Surfing Scratcher here, teacher surfer programmer, and on this channel, I help curious learners just like you along on your learning journey. This video is part of a larger series on creating a digital scale model of the solar system. So go check the card in the top right hand corner now and some links in the description for more info if you're just jumping in at this stage. In the last video, we plotted all these place marks onto Google Earth and all these place marks refer to the planets in our solar system and they're all sort of relative, we've all scaled them down. Now what we're gonna do is go through each of these planets and take a screenshot, and then we're gonna import them into Scratch. So let's go ahead and do that. First up, you're gonna need some sort of screen capture tool. Now I'm on a Mac, there is a built-in one where you can go Control, Command, Shift, and the number four at the same time. And that's going to bring up a little window where you can size it. And the cool thing about it if you look where it says Pluto here, we can actually get dimensions of it as well. So I'm not gonna take a screenshot using that way. I'm gonna use QuickTime Player. And if you're on a PC and you're not sure how to do it, just press print screen and you can open it up in paint and resize it. So I'm gonna be using QuickTime. I'm just gonna open that up. Okay, my QuickTime Player is now open and I'm just going to press Control, Command and N. And that's going to come up with a screen capture. Now. I'm going to capture a selected portion of the screen and there's some various options here that you don't really need to worry about. The main point is that you're going to resize this window and I'm gonna have it around about 860, let's just say 870 by 615. It doesn't really matter, but this size is pretty close to portionate size of the stage on Scratch. That's what we're going for here. So once I'm happy with it, I'm just gonna press capture and it's gonna open up in preview and then I can just save that into my files. And you can see here that I've already gone ahead and done that. So I'm not gonna waste your time by stepping you all the way through that. But that's what I'd like you to go ahead and do is if you're just jumping into this tutorial, check out the link down in the description that links you to this particular Google Earth map. You can check out the table of contents, go through each of the planets and take a screenshot as you work your way through each of the table of contents. I'm gonna assume that you've gone and done that and I'll see you over in Scratch. Okay, now we're over here in Scratch and if you're not familiar with this file, there's a link down below in the description where you can go grab the starter project. Okay, we're just going to paint a new sprite here and we're going to upload all of our costumes. Let's just see how we go by selecting them all. Sweet, that looks like it's going to populate them all in there for us. I'm just gonna go click on that top one and we'll delete it. Cool, so now that we've got all of our images here and they're all in the same location, that's great. We're just going to center it on the stage. I'm gonna change the X to zero and the Y to zero. And now it's pretty much smack bang in the center. And that's what we're looking for here. Let's go to the sun view and back to our code. Let's rename this sprite to planet distances. Eventually we're gonna be able to click the planets and it will navigate to the relevant costume. So what I mean is these planets here and it will navigate to the correct distance. But we'll do that down the track. What we wanna do now is create the animation that will make this happen. And here's what I've got in mind. I'm thinking that if we're on a costume, we wanna to go to another one, we're gonna pixelate this current costume, then we'll switch the costume number after it's pixelated and then we will depixelate the costume. So it looks like there's a transition between the two. So I'll show you how I'm gonna go about doing that. Let's create a custom block and we'll call it transition to costume. We're gonna add an input, I like to put a colon and I'm gonna say costume number. Cool, then head into the control blocks. And let's just repeat for 10 times at the moment. And what we're going to repeat, is so we're going to change the pixelate effect. Let's just do it by 20 at this point. Great, so let's just click this and see what happens. All right, we've got that pixelated animation there. That's not what we want right now, but we know that works. So let's clear the graphic effects. After we've pixelated, we wanna change to the costume. So let's switch the costume to the costume number that we specify in here. Great. And then after that, you wanna grab another repeat block and we're going to change the pixelate effect by negative 20. We wanna reverse what we've done. Let's go and clear those graphic effects again. And now let's check out that animation. There we go. 
we have transitioned, but we haven't actually changed the costume because we need to call this. So right now, our costume number is on the sun because I just put it on the sun. And if I grab out this code block and we transition to say the third costume, check out which one that is, that is Venus. Let's see if that works. And now we're on Venus, ace. Okay, let's bring these planets to the front and make them clickable and that'll round out this tutorial. Let's go to events when the green flag is clicked. Let's go to the back layer and we'll also reset the costume to the sun. So let's click the green flag. You can see all of our planets are here at the start. We're not gonna worry about resizing and repositioning them at the moment. We just wanna get them clickable at this stage. I'm gonna test the Jupiter planet here because it's the nice big one. So what we need to do is grab a when the sprite is clicked block. I'm gonna give you some variables and events to help us out with that. If you're a bit fuzzy on those, go check the card coming your way. Okay, so when this sprite is clicked, we're gonna actually create a new variable here. And this variable is going to be called selected planet. And the values of this will be all the planet names here. Again, another handy reason to have all these planet names as variables. So when this sprite is clicked, we're going to set the selected planet to Jupiter because we're currently on Jupiter. And then we're going to broadcast a message and we need to signal that the state has changed or the selected planet has changed. So, so selected planet has changed. You always want to name these things to reflect what they do. So now I'm going to grab this code block and dump it on Saturn. And this is where having all the individual planets is not so great. But we're going to right click and change it from Jupiter to Saturn. So now I should be able to click between these two and see what happens. So I'm going to just drag down Saturn there just so we can see what's going on. And if we head back into our planet distance sprite, we can receive that event. So when we receive has selected planet changed, we can grab our custom block. And then what we want to do is we want to find the index of that costume. So if we jump into our costumes, we can see that it's not a perfect mapping because sun is actually number one. Mercury would be one plus one. Uh, Venus would be two plus one. And why am I going two plus one? Well, we've got a list down here of our planet names, remember? So Mercury is one, but in our costumes, it's actually two. So we'd have to go this index plus one, whatever the index number is plus one. Okay, let's jump back to the code. So what we can do, we can get the item number of the planet names. And what we're going to pass into that is the selected planet because we've just set that. Then we need our addition operator and we need to add one to it. Awesome, so now we can grab this code and place it into our transition to costume. Now, if I click Saturn, you'll see that we just transitioned to Saturn. It's hard to see, but there you go. If I keep clicking it, we'll keep clicking to Saturn as well. We can fix that later. Now, if I press Jupiter, you see that we've transitioned to Jupiter. So we can click between the two planets and we can see how far they are. Obviously, we're obscuring the view here and that's not ideal, but we're gonna leave that for a later video because that's a little bit more complicated and I wanna introduce uh, a simple state machine to help us out with that to create some modes for our application. For now, you can go ahead and dump this when the sprite is clicked on each of the sprites and change the variable to reflect the planet name that it lives in. Okay, let's just quickly fix that bug where you click the same planet and it transitions. What we're going to do that is duplicate this code block because this is giving us our current costume number that we want to transition to. If we go to our looks, we can grab the current costume number as well. Now, if these don't match, then we want to allow the transition. But if they do match, we don't. So what we can do is we can grab a comparison operator and say, we can check to see if the current costume is equal to the target costume. And if it's not, we can wrap our custom block inside of an if statement and that should work. So now I'll click Jupiter and it's no longer transitioning. It's executing the code, but we're not transitioning. I'll go over to Saturn and boom, that's working as you would expect. So we'll leave this tutorial here. In the next one, we're gonna create a simple state machine that's going to create some modes so we can have different sizes of our planets depending on what view we're looking in. And this will set us up for future videos of creating orbits and, and that kind of thing as well. If you want a taste of that, I've got a card coming away in the top right hand corner now on a video that I've made on a simple state machine. So go check that out beforehand. I'll see you in the next one.